recorded. So this recording will be archived via our YouTube channel. And that is basically for us for future references and for persons who would like to view the webinar again or to share it with somebody that might find it useful. Um, besides that, we're gonna jump into it. I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our speaker. So our speaker for tonight, for this evening, is Mrs. Valerie Powell Walker. She is a dedicated and compassionate financial advisor that has been in the life insurance industry for the past 13 years. She's very passionate about assisting persons to achieve their financial goals and to have complete security for their families and themselves. Now, Valor is a gold member of the Sagittor Production Club. She's a five-time million dollar round table qualifier. And she's also a five-time Century Club qualifier writing over 100 policies yearly. Mrs. Powell Walker is a lover of people and a spiritual motivational speaker. She's in the ministry in the capacity of an associate pastor in the Greater Grace Temple Apostolate. She firmly believes in the scripture, Philippians 4 verses 13, that says, I can do all things to Christ who strengthens me. She has three children, but mothers many through her ministry. So I'm going to go ahead and turn over to Valerie. But before I do so, I want you to be engaging in the chat. Let us know where you're joining from. If it's from in the Eastern Caribbean, if it is from UK, USA, Canada, in Jamaica, wherever you are, let us know as we get into this very important and timely webinar. I hope you all enjoy. Over to you, Valerie. Good, good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening from wherever you are, just want to welcome you to this very, very special evening. First, I really am so grateful to God. And, um, and I just want to thank our, our host this evening, Karina Dice. She is such a helpful, welcoming person in helping me to have this opportunity, this opportunity to share with you my knowledge. We're dealing with financial planning this evening. And as um, you would notice that the topic is financial, personal financial planning, and it's tailored not only for individuals, but for businesses. I know I'm talking to a wide variety of persons in their different capacity. And I have tailored this presentation, hoping it will suit everybody. Thank you all for joining. And I'm hoping that this evening will be a great evening as we share together the importance of financial planning. I'd like to start by saying to us, when we look on financial planning, we look on liquidity. It is so important to make sure that when the time is necessary, we are liquid. I'll explain that, you know, funds are, are readily available. We'll be looking on retirement. We'll be looking on critical illness and disability live and that's living benefits. We'll also be looking on financial security at death. And this is true life insurance. Now, what is liquid, like what is liquidity? Assets should be easily converted to cash. The most liquid asset, so you have stocks and bonds are easily converted to cash. We need to also create liquidity by building cash reserves through savings and investments. Now, think of job loss unforeseen home or auto repair. 
medical emergencies are expenses that we should be able to cover through liquidity without going into debt. And now is the right time when we look on it, when we think of it. A lot of persons since 2020, this very dreadful, terrible, <laughs> terrible disease, the COVID-19, man, we have been through it and we are still going through it. A lot of persons have lost their jobs. Some persons, some companies, they tried, but they just could not do anything about it. Some persons are out here now job hunting. Some persons have to try and create their own jobs. And we have to admit that through this COVID-19, a lot of persons have learned a lot of skill and they are now able to do their own business. Some persons, they were that their backs were against the wall and they had no choice but to start their own business. And my, my, didn't that work out for them? Some persons, if they should look on what they're earning now in comparison to when they were in a job, they're earning three times or more, but because of the of job loss, they went that way. Now let us look on unforeseen home or auto repair. Now, it's very, very important to make sure that some money is slashed away, that sometimes some things happen to the house that we were not expecting to happen at all. Sometimes a serious heavy rain come or a hurricane or a storm and has caused some serious leaking roof or you name it or vehicle, although you're even driving the vehicle, it has been servicing, but just a, see a part just gone bad and it has become so expensive to repair it. So we have to think of that medical emergency. Nobody know about tomorrow. It doesn't matter how we exercise, how we eat right, how we do our regular checkups. There, will come a time that some emerge, medical emergency appear. When we look, some serious illness affects our bodies and we need monies right away. We have to be liquid. Money has to be, swat, um, so money has to be somewhere and we have to have easy access to that money. We have to make sure that we have all these things in place, that when these things come for unforeseen, when you look at COVID and see the amount of things happen, how many persons have become so ill, persons have to be at home for a while, then we know that this is a fact. We can't live in denial. No, question, do, you have enough money set aside for emergencies? Need you to think about that? Answer to yourself. Are you comfortable with the margin between your expenses and, inco and income? Do you have a systematic saving plan for large purchases? so that you don't put yourself in debt. Very important. We have to plan for tomorrow. We have to plan for the future because anything can happen. And we have to make sure that we are liquid. Money is readily available for such unforeseen circumstances. Now, I'd love for us to look on Retirement planning. The time factor, the sooner we start, the more contributions will compound and grow. Result will be higher savings at retirement. Now, when I sit with my prospects, I would say to them that Yes, I know that there's a set time at age for retirement, but what if? What if we have to retire 
before the time based on certain issues, unforeseen issues. So for example, what if one becomes so ill that you have to retire at 45? Then it's very important that we start putting away as early as the first job for retirement. Very important that we start that from early, because what if we don't live to reach 65? We have to make sure we start planning from early. Now, retirement lifestyle, and the question is, where do you see yourself? The lifestyle you're now living, wouldn't you want to live that lifestyle or even a better lifestyle when you retire? When one retires, you know, you want to go and enjoy your retirement. You want to go and cruise. You want to go on different vacation. Uh, you want to know different countries. You just want to spend time with friends and family and just enjoy it. And of course, don't we know? It takes money, money to care. So it takes money to live that lifestyle. So it's very important to invest, save. Have you started an, another question? Have you started planning for retirement? If you have not yet started planning for retirement, if you, it doesn't matter if you're 22 or younger, as long as you have a job, maybe you have already, maybe you have your career at age 22, 23, then you need to start planning for, for retirement. It's not too early, not too early. Very important to start planning for retirement. At what age do you want to retire? So these are questions that I'm asking this evening. What age would you want to retire? And I mean, retire comfortable. Make sure that the lifestyle is pretty good. You're comfortable. You can do what you want to do. You can go where you want to go. You can enjoy life as you want to do it, what age are you thinking of that? No. Do you use investment principles as part of your financial security plan? I don't know what plans you do, but it is very important that we think of some form or different plans, different investment plans. The portfolio can be as wide as it can be. Very important. Do you regular, regularly contribute to a retirement plan? So if you're working somewhere and they don't have a retirement plan in place, same thing as pension plan, then you need to make sure that you think about that for yourself and get something in place. Very important. Retirement planning is very, very important. Now, this is one of my passionate section that I really spend a lot of time and I'm always so concerned when I sit with, with prospects to discuss critical illness and disability that's living benefits. Now, what strategy do you have in place to protect your wealth from uncontrollable events. Do you have plans? Do you have some stress to become critically ill? Your wealth is still intact. Do you have that in place? No. Protect your finances through critical illness coverage. Very, very important that one's finances are protected. We don't want when you, if you should become ill by any critical illnesses, then you have to go into your wealth very deep and then you no longer have any money. And critical illnesses, what are critical illness coverages? We have critical illnesses like cancer, the big C, we call it. Oh my God, aren't we afraid of the big C? 
So many of us have been through emotional trauma because of the big C. Friends, family, oh my God, have suffered. Some survived and some did not. So we have cancer, heart attack, blindness, deafness, coma, you name them, major burn. Um, if you become disabled, if you have a kidney, kidney problem, so to go on the dialysis is very, very expensive. Yeah. That's expensive. Per for one time. And some persons have to go on the dialysis for three times per week. Very expensive. Disability insurance will protect your income for the short or long term if you are no longer able to work. So you have to have something in place that in case you become disabled and you can't work, then we have to make sure that something is in place. How will your income be affected if you become disabled or if you're diagnosed with an illness? That's a big million dollar question. How will it affect you? If you are no longer able, if you're no longer able to work, you have to think about how do, what type of income would I have? Do I have income coming in? That can be fixed. Would you be able to afford your current standard of living if you become disabled? Wow, what a question. Everybody want to live comfortable. Everybody want to make sure that they are quite comfortable, but Something has to be in place. Some critical illness coverage has to be in place to cover you if you become disabled. Another question, would you be able to continue your retirement plan? That's why I was saying earlier how important it is to start from early because we don't know when, your, when retirement will come for you in case you become ill. Now, that's critical illness, very, very important. Very important. Um, before I started doing this, from when I was quite young, I remember somebody said to me that this man had like two very nice homes, two very nice vehicles. He became ill. He had to sell one of the home, sell one of the vehicle, and then he had to make sure that he rent a part of his house just to take care of the bills per month. You don't have to do this. You just need to put something in place that you can still enjoy your wealth. Now, let us look on life insurance. Could your family afford their current lifestyle in the event of your transition? Mm? If it happened that you should pass away, you have your loving family, your young children, your, your beautiful wife, your mother that you're responsible for. If it's a, or your husband, because female, you have, you have to think about your husband, you have to think about your children, um, your minor children, especially. If, you should be no longer here. Would your loving, beautiful family still have the current lifestyle that they now have? Because you as the main breadwinner is here. Questions keep going. Do you have, do you have your insurance needs assessed regularly by a financial advisor? Do you? Or do you even have a financial advisor? If you don't have a financial advisor, I am here. I'm willing to speak with you, meet with you, discuss with you how you can go ahead to do this. Provided financial security 
protecting your wealth and family should be a priority. Very important, that must be number one. You have to make sure that you are providing financial security for your family, protecting your wealth and family. And of course we know that our family is number one. So we have to do that true life insurance. And let me assure you all, that it doesn't matter how wealthy you are, it's very important to have some life insurance. That's asset being added to what you have already. Yes. And life insurance is not only for death, but if you need to buy a property, you can also take, in, in, take out in life insurance for that. Now, life insurance, I can assure you all, it provides peace of mind. Life insurance is also for debt repayment. And it's for final, final expenses. And guess what also? Life insurance is there to create generational wealth. We need to make sure that we provide for our next and next generation, our grandchildren, very important that we have things in place to provide for our grandchildren, our children, because it's all about generational wealth. Now, I'd love to leave with you some financial tips. A goal without a plan is a wish. If you have a goal and you don't set out and have your plan in place, then it's only a wish, you know, you only want to do this, you want to do that. But if you don't have a plan set out, then it's just a wish. Plan to reach your financial goals. It is within your reach. So make sure you have your plans for your financial goals and make sure it is in your reach. It's not far. You know, we know what we can do. We know what we can do. We can do anything we set ourselves to do. Now, we need to make sure we find the right balance between income, savings, and protecting your wealth in times of uncertainty. And that definitely will come. Consider your future and take steps towards securing your financial future. Very, very, very important. Have to take some steps. Don't make sense to say, yes, you want to do that. You want to do that, keep saying it and then procrastinate. Procrastinate? No, that's a big, big problem. And a lot of persons are sorry today because they did not act on it right away. So I implore you that you make sure that you consider your future, take steps towards securing your financial future. Now, I need to say to us and you all, don't wait for it to happen. Don't wait, just go make it happen. I thank you very much. And I need to also inform you, I have a YouTube channel. I'm on Instagram, my YouTube channel, you can find me as Valerie Powell Walker or Auntie Val. Auntie Val or Valerie Powell Walker. I'd love for you to, to check out my YouTube channel. I'd love for you to, to, to watch, share and subscribe. I would really, really appreciate that. Thank you very much, my, my viewers, my participants, and thank you again, Miss Dice. God bless you all. All right, thank you so much, Valerie. I'm sure we learned um, a lot in that short presentation. If there are any questions, you may type them in the chat or you can go ahead and unmute your mic to ask your questions. Um, but Valerie, I have a question. Um, you mentioned life insurance and you know you being able to utilize that life insurance for example as i think you said security or collateral should you need to you know get a mortgage or something can you 
probably explain us a little bit more how that would work. Okay. Now, we know, especially getting a house, housing trust give, if you're, if you, if you're alone and you go to housing trust, it's just $6.5 million. And when you look around the houses nowadays, they're talking about 20 odd million and so on. So as long as you're qualified to pay the loan from housing trust and to pay, then you could go to a institution, but they're going to require you to have some life insurance. If you have the life insurance already that you can use, it's called Credit Life. If you have that life insurance and you can give them to put their lien on it, then they could use that. But if you don't, you come to me and I'll write you the amount that is needed for the balance of the loan. So if you should pass away, then of course, if they take the, if they collect the life insurance, then the house would be there for your loved ones. That's how it works. So you just need to make sure you're in good, you're, you, you are able financially to manage. So if you want to buy a property for whether it's 20, 50, 60 million, as long as you're qualified to pay back, you can show them that you're able to pay back. Then you just come to us and we give you that life insurance and you take that document to them. And they will now put a lien on it that you are free to have your house, including, including housing trust. Or if you didn't, or if you have already gotten through with housing trust and just want to buy a property, and of course, they're going to need life insurance. And it's quite reasonable when you speak with me and I do it for you. It's, it's reasonable to do it with us. Thank you for the question. Are All you right. okay Thank with the answer? Me. Yes, that's perfect. Mag okay. said, Thank you. Short and beneficial presentation. And OJ Smith um, is asking, Is your life insurance a person over 60 years old? Yes, ma'am. You persons can get life insurance up to 80 as long as they're in good health, up to 80. But if they're not in good health, we stop at 75. Up to 80 because they would have to do a medical. But if you are not in good health and you're up to 75, yes, you get life insurance. All right, great. And Tamar is saying thank you, Mrs. Paul Walker, for, for an informative and thought-provoking presentation. No, I'm seeing other questions here. James, you're welcome. A. James said, if you're 10 years from retirement, but you have nothing prepared for retirement, what kind of advice can you give that person? Could you repeat the question for me? Sure. A. James said, if you're 10 years from retirement, you have only 10 years left before you retire, you have nothing prepared, nothing in place for retirement, what kind of advice can you give that person? Can that person still start planning for that next 10 years so that they can retire? Oh, oh yes. Yes, because I can tell you, the um, retirement pension plan, it yields a lot of interest in comparison to other, to other instruments. So having 10 years, it all depends. Yes, you can put away what you're comfortable with because you have to know, remember, you can't touch that until you reach your retirement age. So it is still time for you to do it. They always say half a loaf of bread is better than than nothing at all. So it's never too late as long as you have a few more years leave. And you, depends. And um, some persons can retire at 70 or so. It all depends on when, when you choose to retire. Because it's not like, we're, or if you have a personal retirement, it's not like you're going to stop it exactly at 65. You can't go too much further. It's up to you to decide that. So of course, oh, James, you can go ahead. And I would encourage you to start now. If that is that case, start now. It will yield great fruits by then. All right, thank you for that um, explanation or answer to A. James' question. But for planning for retirement, um, outside of your regular you know, pension scheme that you pay towards if you're employed, what other options are there for, for planning for your retirement? Do you have any recommendations of yeah. other things that people can get into for retirement planning? 
Yes, I would recommend to persons as long as I would recommend them that they think of even real estate. Real estate is so important. And real estate is awesome. If you can buy a property, especially when you're younger and you have so much more years ahead to pay. So if you, based on your age, your, your, your um, mortgage will be much, much less than somebody who's much older than you are. So you could take out another property um, you could buy another property and rent it because you might be paying your mortgage of $50,000 and you're able to get $150,000 from the rental. So that is also very, very good to do that. And of course, people buy stocks and shares and you name it, but some persons would keep buying and selling back and keep doing that. So it's always very important to do that. And plus we have other investment instruments too that you can do. We have investments that you that persons use to cushion their pension. So some persons might come to us and said, listen, I have a pension. Can I get another one? I said, no, you can't get that. But we have other investment plans that you can put away some money and said, this is to help cushion my pension that I know that I know have in place. So it's all about it's all about you budgeting. You sit with us, you sit with me as an advisor, a uh, 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 very experienced one, and I could budget with you and say, okay, you can't get another pension, but you could do this. You put this away for a time that when you reach that age, you're now able to reap benefits, great benefits. All right, thank you very much. You spoke about okay. critical illnesses. As it relates to um, critical illness and disability coverage, is there uh, an age? that you know it, it you're not eligible for that anymore or is it the same as life insurance up to 80 as long as you're in good health no um critical illness um they well we have some we have critical illness not for even children you know we have a plan that covers children for education critical and life but the regular critical illnesses would start at age 18 up to 60. But there's one, but it's really just a cancer plan after 60. I think that one stop at 64. But the regular critical illnesses start from 18 up to 60. And when you reach, if you reach um, after that, when you reach a certain age after 60, then if nothing happens, you will get back money. But we will discuss that with the person is interested. We could talk one-to-one, -one, okay, everybody, based on what they would want. Okay, thank you for that explanation. And well. also, one second, please, Karina. Mm -hmm. Let me say to persons that if you even have high blood pressure, if you even have HIV, or you name it, you can still get certain things. We can discuss based on your, based on your illness, you can get critical illness as long as it's not stroke and cancer and, and those things, and you're free to get it. So okay. what if you're recovering, Valerie? What if you had a stroke and you're recovering? Would you be able to get critical illness coverage? No, you, you can't get, get that. You can't, you can't get okay. that because there's a question that is asked and it has to be answered truthfully because if you don't answer it truthfully and you get another attack or another say another say you get cancer this time or you get then the physician has to the physician because it's not like you're going to answer when you become ill again or have any form of critical illness there's a statement that the, the physician has to answer and you know that no physician is going to put him or herself in any in any problem to lose their license Okay, and what if you have a critical illness? Are you eligible for life insurance? Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can. But it's only that I would have to know, tell you what you can get. You would not be able to choose and say to me, say, okay, I want this one um, because uh, you can't. So you can get one, but there will be a waiting period. I wouldn't be able to give you a life insurance that as you sign the form today, if something happens to you tomorrow, you, we pay out. No, there would have to be a waiting period if you are not, if you are not totally well, but you can get it. Okay, understood. Thank you. And Carlisha Ale Alexander Wilson is asking, if a person dies before maturation date of their retirement plan, 
Will the plan lose the compound interest it gained over the years? No, well, all right. I am not very, very versed when it comes to pension plan. So I'll tell you that. But remember that when you die, your beneficiaries would know based on what the person, based on, based on how you stipulate, how you want it to be paid out, you know, your beneficiary will know come into play. So that part, when it comes to total pension plan, I'm not going to say I am a 100% when it comes to that question. But I could, I could research it for you though. And she can take my number and I could be in contact with her to tell her 100% exactly how it would work. Is that okay? Yes, that would so be fine. I, I would like to give her the number now because I would now go to the pension, pension section and ask that particular question. So we'll, we, we, I could you, be in touch with her. You can Except, provide the number. I'll put it in the chat so that she can contact okay. you or anybody else can contact you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, or oh, in the meantime, Olive is saying that um, is it good? Is it a good plan to have two pension plans, one from your employer and a personal pension plan? No, um, you can't really have two pension plans, you know. I know of one pension plan, but you can have other plans, other investment. Because, say, for example, if you were working somewhere, right and you had a pension plan and you are no longer there you know a lot of persons what they do when they come to the new company they come with the lump sum and continue with the pension but to have two pension plan no you have to have one pension plan and then you have one pension plan and you could have other plans to to cushion your pension plan but if you have a pension plan and you were self-employed before, then, and you're now working somewhere, you could just stop that one, but it would still be there. And now the workplace will have this in place, which you will be contributing and they'll be contributing a percentage. Most places do that, then that's it. But two pension plan is not allowed. So if I know that you have one pension plan and you tell me, I can't write you another one because we were trained and we are told that we can't do that. All right, thank you so much for that explanation, Valerie. I'm not seeing Welcome. any additional questions in the chat. I'm seeing, you know, person saying thank you. And I'm also seeing um, where Patricia Ridwar, um is advising that she has a book specific to the journey and destination retirement planning um, that is available at the UE Bookshop or the Reader's Bookshop at Ligani Plaza. Um, so okay. persons can check that out if they need more in-depth information about pension and retirement planning, I would assume. And Olive okay. is saying thank you for your response. If there are no other questions, okay. if there are, if anybody, you know, would like to open your mic and ask a question or to type in the chat. Um, if not, Valerie, is there anything else you'd like to say before we sign off? Well, let me wait and, and listen if other persons have questions or if they have any statement or what they want to do. I wanted to ask, you spoke about liquidity um, in the first, I think the first slide. Yes. Um, an emergency, you know, saving, saving for unforeseen um, situations. Yeah. Um, do you have any specific um, plans or, or, or investment type that can be used for emergency planning or emergency funds unforeseen? instances or incidences like yes ma'am okay we we have quite a few and would you also know that critical illness <laughs> critical i would look at critical illness as an emergency plan you know as I, I look at it as one too because if something happened you need emergency money but that is one but we have other investments too because put it this way you might be saving for three years and that can't amount to a certain amount 
Uh, so it's very important. So critical illness coverage is one, two, any emergency. If you become critical, if you become critical, it's there. But we have investments. We have quite a few investments and it's tailored to each person based on what they can afford, how they can put it, whether they can put every, every six months or once a year or every month, it all depends. So when I meet with prospects, I discuss the different ones we have and the one are the ones that suit them better then i go ahead with that okay thank you very much for that explanation Welcome. valerie Welcome. um i think we're all set it has been informative it has been you know real and 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 and, and you know very timely for everything that's happening and you know persons need to definitely plan as you said regardless of our age um mm -hmm. of our gender or status whether we're rich or poor or whether we're, you know, completely healthy right now or not, we still can have yes. things in place um, mm -hmm. to push on any any future incidences um, so that our family and ourselves are protected financially from that fallout. Yes. So um, because there are no more questions, okay. I would like to wish everyone a good night, a good morning. No, hold on, hold are. on, Tarina. Let me now say to persons, sometimes you have your parents, you have your grandparents, and you might think because they have a stroke and they're in bed or they have lost two limbs or you name or you name it, they can't get insurance. I've had I've I've dealt with so many persons that did not know that they were qualified for insurance. I remember um, I went to a lady. There was a financial advisor who had left the company, and the person sent me to a lady. And knowing me, I'm going to ask you about your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, ask you who and who you're responsible for, and also ask for prospects. I asked her, what about your husband? Does he have life insurance? She said, no, Mrs. Walker, he does not have any life insurance, and I don't think he can get it. I said, why you say that? She said, well, he has had stroke. He had lost one of his legs. He can't. I said, listen, can he afford it? That time this man was on retirement. And I said to her, yes, he can. And she said, yes, they can afford it. I gave them a plan. But the only thing this plan has a waiting period. I remember during that first, that first year, she would call me from time to time. And she would say to me, you know that, say, for example, the man is brown. You know that, Mr. Brown, I know my husband is gone to the hospital. And I said, listen, we are going to pray because I don't want you to lose your husband. But more so, I know you're not ready financially. So we pray and hope that he lives for at least 13 months. Because with that, she would be able to have some amount of money. And that keep happening a few times during the first 13 months. And I can tell you listeners, viewers, that the eggs, like if I sold her the plan, the 12th of December, 2010, the 13th of December, 2011, one year after he passed away. And she said to me, he had his children and only one of them gave her a small amount. And she said she went on her knees and she thanked God the day she met me because she did not know that he could get a plan. Did not know he could get a plan. And she said, I take shame out of her, uh, out of her face. Can I remember now, you know, we cater to different type of persons. There are some persons that don't have a lot. But there are some persons who have a lot, but some persons, although they have a lot, some don't really structure their finances at all. And let me remind us all, that is not about what we earn, it's, but it's about what we save. Please remember, it's not what you earn, it's what you save. And sometimes you're so surprised to know that this small of, so small of money could really do something for you. Don't underestimate what you have. If this is what you have, call me, text me, WhatsApp me, send me an email. I will be available to talk with you. If I miss a call on my phone, I'll call back. If I, if I see a text, if I see a WhatsApp, if I see an email, I'm going to respond because 
you might not know. And don't listen to other persons. Some persons will say this to you and say, say that to you. What if you're sorry when it's too late? Talk to somebody who really, talk to me. I genuinely care and I want to help. So reach out to me, I'm available. And I'll sit with you, talk with you on the phone and see how best we can resolve your retirement, your future, because it's never too late. It's never too late. As long as you have breath in your body, it's never too late. So just, be, just try your very best, reach out to me, and I will sit at a mutually convenient time with you. We discuss on the phone first, and a mutually convenient time. As a matter of fact, there are some plans that don't even have to be done with hard copy. You can go online. We have one that is called eLife. You can go on, on it for yourself. And in case you can't manage based on the plan, and based on if you can't manage by yourself, then I will get help. You will get help to do it online. So there are some plans that you can that can be done online. So if you're in Montego Bay, if you're in Otterios, you no know, matter where you are, from Moran Point to Negril Point. If we can meet in person based on what your needs are, we can do it on, 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 the, on, the, in, on the internet. Technology is a great thing. And my, my, we have learned it more so since COVID came along. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Someone just asked another question. Could you yes, yes. Came Marlon is asking how soon after a critical illness do you, would you be okay. able to get a payment? Okay. All right. Now, critical illness depends on the plan. One has a three months waiting period and one has a six months waiting period. And so it all depends. Six months or three months. And I see another question by Sandra Rob, and that's one of my friends. Thanks for joining, Sandra. Is a medical required for the seniors? Depends on the age of the senior and how much coverage the senior need, and depend on the the health. Depends on the 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 condition based on the health then we would not decide on that. That's why we sit with them and talk with them and then we go ahead with a decision. So it all depends. All right, Valerie, so you're saying for critical illness payout, um, mm -hmm. it's either three or six months after the illness is confirmed? Yes. Okay. All right, Marlon, I think that answers your question. Depending on the plan that you have, the payout is between three and six months um, after that confirmed illness. Yes, and I would encourage everybody and anybody the moment to think of doing a critical illness or any other plan especially a life insurance and critical illness don't wait don't wait because there's a waiting period for the critical illness and what if what if you decide waiting waiting for a month undecisive and then when you decide to do it you 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 become ill after five months and the plan you have is a six month waiting period oh my lord that's rough and we can't, we can't scoop us film milk at all. So now is the time. Now is the time. The evening is still young. After this meeting, you can reach out to me and I'm available. All right, thank you so much, Valerie. And I placed your information in the chat, your email and your telephone numbers. So anyone is interested in getting some more advice, one-on-one -on -one advice, one-on-one -on -one, um, information about any you know possible options for yourself or your family members as she said mm -hmm. you know critical illness is also available for children uh, yeah. or life insurance i think i think yeah. it's critical illness that you said so it's something to consider for your entire family and so, before we go sorry karina and before we go 
I noticed, I saw her name and I figured one of my clients was on and she was saying she agree when it, come into, when it's, when it comes to investment and so on. I saw her name in there, one of my clients, Kadian. She is saying she agrees because she know how much time her back is against the wall and she remember that she have something, she have some form of investment on her plan. Can you have a life insurance and then you can now have rider on it. So you can put that investment on it so in case you can't afford a lump sum to putting away a big amount you can put a small amount on it and it grows believe you me and i can tell you this i would have so much testimony to share i, I spent some time with a, a young lady and she was saying she have so much savings already she don't need anything on her life insurance that's but guess what if it's even a hundred dollar i'm putting on the plan because i don't know one day one day i said to her you know that you have over five thousand dollars on this plan. She said, no, sir, but I wasn't saving anything. I said, you were saving a hundred dollars right away. She now said, you know what? If this hundred dollar can turn to five thousand something, you know, it's a short time. I am now going to start with two thousand dollars on my savings. So believe you me, every that what I say again, every every mickle make a muckle. So we one man cocoa full basket. So it's not about the lump sum you have then you can put away a small amount. This question is asked, do you recommend term life or whole life to cover mortgage or other collateral? Well, term life, when you take out term life insurance and you finish paying for your mortgage, there's nothing there to get. But when you take out a life insurance, a whole life plan, when you take that out after you have finished paying for pay, paying your mortgage, then there's money there for you to get. So that's the difference. So it all depends. So as I said, it's a one-to-one, -one. we tailor, we, we, we do the plan based on what you want to do. So I would sit with the person, I would explain the both of them to them, and then they could decide, and they could have part of a life insurance and part of the supplemental term also. So we could discuss that. Um, Christopher, Mar Marlon Christopher, we could discuss that. Just reach out to me and we could discuss that, okay? All right, Valerie, um, would you like to add anything else before we go? No, as I said, we have to remember that we have our responsibility. The Bible tells us that if we don't provide for a family, we are worse than an infidel. And also we need to provide for our next generation is about our wealth. And it's very important that we start from today. If, you know, what I realize, even sometimes you go to the grocery store somewhere and you come back with some silver and you put away, you just get, have even a bag or a joiner and you throw some and you put the silver in there. One day to come, you'd be so surprised. So surprised when you look at that, it could be 50,000, 100,000 just by silver. So if you can do that with silver, can you imagine you make a, a, you decide now that I'm gonna put away 5,000 per month? If somebody in another five years you know, decide to put away 15 or 20,000 per month, you know, they won't have more than you because time is important. Time. You, you would have now had five years ahead of that person. You would have accumulated so much so this person could never have the amount you have. So let me end by saying it's not what you have. It's not what you can put away. But just talk with me and we discuss what is best for your situation. Today, you might not be able to afford more than $3,000. In another five years, you'll be able to afford $10,000, $20,000. Let it grow with you. Let it grow with you. Whatever you can afford, there is a place for you. There's a place for you. Sometimes persons don't understand and because they don't understand, then there is a issue. But I encourage you all, let us discuss, let us see where you are, let us see what you want to achieve and I will sit with you and help you the best way I can. I thank you all very, very, very much. Really do appreciate you all, really. 
do appreciate you very um very much i, I i'm slowing now because i was trying to read this question oh is that a question oh is that a question okay so i'm reachable now the moment we close if you need to talk with me i'm available no, our timing, you know, based on all, if you have to see somebody late, you have to see somebody at six o'clock in the morning, because tomorrow morning, my, my first appointment is way before seven o'clock in the morning. So it depends on where you are, the shift you're on, if we need to see each other face to face. I am available. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Karina. Really do appreciate it. And I'm so glad the day a client recommended me to you. And I really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you too, Valerie. Okay. I'm leaving here much more confident with the information. I'm sure other persons are based on the feedback in the chat. Um, but before we go, this is a final, final question. S. Hilton is asking, can someone change from one company to yours? I would assume they're talking about one insurance company to yours person can change but i don't advise them to do that because you'll be throwing away your money really you, you you have money there already and you have been doing that for years to really start over a plan would be wasting of money so the person can still talk to me and based on what it is then i could definitely give some advice all right great so that answers your question as hilton you can have more than one um Plans, and I'm plus sure. two, so yes. if you decide you that you can have, plans, have yeah. another one to push on what you already mm -hmm. have, then you can definitely um, speak to another person or to Valerie for that. So good night, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be in contact with the next webinar and we hope you learned something. And the great takeaway is it's not what you earn, but it's what you save. So start planning yes. from today. All right. Have a good night, everyone. And thank you again, Valerie, for your welcome. You're welcome. And thank you too. Much, right. much appreciate. All right. Good night. I really do appreciate it. Much appreciated.